Hey everybody, this is Matt with Texas Toast Guitars and I am at the 2018 NAMM show and I'm very fortunate to be with Jamie Gale who is the curator, right, of the Boutique Guitar Builders Showcase. Did I get it right? Yes, you did. All right, tell us a little bit about what the Boutique Guitar Builders Showcase is. Uh, you know, last year it was a little more artsy and this year it's definitely um, more guitars that I would see people playing it just so happen to be built by hand builders and, and small batch, well, boutique guitar builders. So right. tell us a little bit about what what goes on and uh, what people can expect to see. And uh, we'll roll in some pictures while you're talking to us. So. Yeah, okay, great. So the Boutique Guitar Showcase is really um, an example of what guitar makers are doing today. The NAMM show in general is full of a lot of successful companies who have reached sort of pop pop status, yeah. you know, who were innovative in 1937 and 1957 and 1985, and are now sort of known and filled guitar stores around the world. Yep. But they're not really a great example of what guitar makers are doing today, because the guitar is not stagnant. The guitar continues to evolve. There's lots of new things that are happening. And one of the things that I think that's cool about small batch builders is they represent the zenith of what's coming, but there's been a resurgence and a, um, a, a renaissance of guitar makers. Would you agree with that? Yes and no, actually, <laughs> okay. Matt. Because the thing that makes the electric guitar unique and the steel string acoustic guitar unique in the world of instruments is the fact that it evolved post-industrialization. Okay. So actually, the electric guitar and the steel string acoustic guitar developed in factories, whereas the violin, the piano, the saxophone, all these things were made for literally hundreds of years before the Industrial Revolution and developed by small craftsmen. So this actually isn't really a renaissance. This is the first blossoming of okay. handcrafting coming out of what started in a factory. So you're getting a history lesson too from Jamie. That's cool. Okay, right on. I dig that. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, we are seeing innovations that happen by small guitar makers in the mass productions this year. For example, if you wander around uh, down in Hall E where a lot of the offshore manufacturing of the lower price guitars uh -huh. are happening, we're seeing Laskin style armrests and rib rests. Okay. In $200 guitars. Yeah. And side sound hole ports. If you're not familiar with this, these are innovations by a Canadian Luther by the name of Grit Laskin that are now happening in the entire guitar world. We're seeing uh, multi-scale instruments, fan frets, yep. on mass at the NAMM show. Yep. And again, from inexpensive guitars right through to high end guitars, you know, only a few years ago, if you were to mention a multi-scale instrument, you might think of a dingwall bass. Yeah. If you know your history, you might know a little bit more about Novak's design. Truth is that it, that happened Hundred years ago, or two hundred years ago, in Vienna, there's a there's a there's a guitar in Vienna that's multi-scale. Okay, that's hundreds of years old. Right on. But now we're seeing it on mass and mass accepted, and we're okay. seeing it all over the place. And so these are the innovations that continue to happen here in the Boutique Guitar Showcase. There's a guitar maker from Australia named Pony that has a customer who liked the multi-scale guitars, but found that he had a certain point where he just couldn't quite form the chord as comfortably as he wanted to. Okay. And so, Daniel Memory of Oni Guitars curved the fret. Oh, wow. And so you'll see multi-scale guitars now with a curved fret. That's a new There's innovation. There's no way I could make a nut for that guitar. Uh, that, I've only made one multi-scale guitar, and that, that just, that, 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 that kind of blows my mind, so yeah. You know, the idea of crowning those frets. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it can be done. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot of work, right? And so these are the kind of innovations that we're seeing happening. Uh, it's still continue to happen every single day. And I'm someone who is really in touch with small guitar makers. So let's talk a little bit about that. Now you've taught at a handful of guitar schools, is that right? Luthery schools? I don't, I don't teach at the schools. I've been asked to come in to do lectures and workshops with them. Okay. And that has mainly been about the business of guitar. My history, I've been a touring player, a retailer. I've been okay. a, I had an art gallery show, guitar, sculptural art. Right on. Distribution, manufacturing, the whole thing. And so the name show brought me in as a consultant to help them do a better oh, job with okay. small guitar makers. Okay, I see. Okay, because of all my experience in this, I had to make an environment that worked for small makers, that worked for the retailers, worked for the press, the show, everyone involved. Gotcha, okay. Um, and so, likewise, some of the guitar schools and builder organizations around the world, like the European Guitar Builders Association, has had me come out to the show in Berlin the last couple of years. Is that the Holy Grail that guitar is the show? the Holy okay. Grail show, yes. So there's two days before the Holy Grail show, which don't show up in the press, which are just for guitar builders. Okay, and cool. There are sort of seminars and 
you'll hear people like Willie Teufel and Grit Laskin give lectures to other guitar makers. Right on. And in this case, I'm often brought in to talk about business and such. Now that, that brings me to another thing that I've been thinking about. The first day that we came through the, uh, the Boutique Guitar Builders Showcase, I was worried. I thought, wow, it's only going to be a bunch of guitar makers talking to a bunch of other guitar makers who paid to be here. But I've talked to a lot of the guys and they're like, no, no, lots of people come through here. People have sold guitars. It's been a really, really successful thing for all the exhibitors. So good on you for putting something together that's as cool as it is. How much do you think it's going to grow in the coming years oh. at the NAMM show? It's, come on, i put you on the spot. Well, I mean, we're 50% larger than we were last year. I know, yep. And yep. it's possible that we may grow it more this next year. The challenge that we have is if you want to keep it fresh, you want yeah. to keep it interesting, and where's the threshold of people who are truly doing unique world-class instruments yeah. that we can introduce new ones every year? If you put 200 makers in here and you add one or two a year of new people, it's not going to work. Pretty soon it just becomes a small show inside a show and then, yeah. That's right. So okay. this year there are 18 first-time guitar makers wow. exhibiting at the NAMM show okay. within the 31 exhibitors at the BGS. That's I great. that's a pretty good number to keep things interesting and fresh. Yeah, yeah. And do you do, do, you do uh, the same, same kind of setup at the Summer NAMM as well? So we do do a boutique guitar showcase at Summer NAMM. The luthiers are, are not required to attend it. We do a bit of a hybrid version of it. Okay. And I did have a few luthiers come in at this last You know, I NAMM. talked to John Sullivan about that. He said, yeah, we, we had a guitar there last summer. He That's didn't right. go, but okay, yeah. John sent the guitar, but Sheldon Dingwall showed up, Doug Cower showed up, Julian Green showed up. I had about four or five luthiers okay. show up that were representative of, I think, about 18 or 20 right on. guitar brands that were there. Okay, great. Well, so uh, what's next? What do you want to talk about? We'll wrap it up and let you get back to... Uh, I know you got a bunch of people waiting yeah. on you, so so uh, what what what's next and what's what's cool and exciting coming up next time? Well, uh, honestly, if I had something to say to guitar makers and uh -huh. aspiring guitar makers, this is this as is well. this is the this is the money shot, guys. Okay, here we go. And the thing I actually go in and talk to the schools about is helping them think about a sellable guitar. It's tricky because your need to make a guitar does not necessarily match someone else's need to buy a guitar. <laughs> That's right. Okay? And if it is your plan to be selling your guitars, you have to be thinking about design. If you're thinking about your brand and trying to create something unique. The struggle is when we're trying to think about something unique on a theoretical level. My advice to any guitar maker out there is to be introspective. Mm -hmm. Be honest with yourself. Who you are. And when you can be really honest with yourself, then you have to have the courage to share who you are with yeah. the rest of the world through your design. Yep. But take the time to think about it, to work through those issues. And when I see a really great world-class guitar, what I see is the guitar maker. Right on. Well, Jamie, thanks for taking a few minutes to uh, sit and talk with us here, stand and talk with us here, as it were. And uh, thank you very much for putting on the show, or the, uh, the Boutique Guitar Builder Showcase, inside the NAMM show. We look forward to uh, seeing what's coming up next, and uh, we'll hope to talk to you in the future. So this is Matt at Texas Toast Guitars reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody.